The Rules Committee will come to order. We are here for a consideration of HRES 501, expressing the sense of the House of Representatives regarding any final measure to extend the payroll tax holiday, extend federally funded unemployment insurance benefits, or prevent decreases in reimbursement for physicians who provide care to Medicare beneficiaries. Let me just at the outset um, apologize to all the members of the committee. Um, as is often the case when you're dealing with um, challenging circumstances uh, like this. Uh, we had a protracted Republican conference uh, gathering that uh, started at 6 o'clock and uh, went until 8 o'clock, and I apologize profusely to uh, Ms. Slaughter. I don't apologize to Mr. Sessions. Uh, he deserved to sit here, um, you know, even if he were all alone, he'd still deserve it. But Ms. Slaughter doesn't deserve this kind of treatment. I just want to say and I apologize to you for uh, the fact that you uh, had to wait here and, um, uh, and that our meeting went on longer. We, we thought that the conference would be a little over an hour, and so that's why we said 7.05 and 7.15, and, uh, and then we uh, did uh, have a change. So why don't, why don't uh, we just uh, begin, and we'll entertain the motion, then we can have a discussion on this. It shall be in receipt of a motion from the gentleman from Dallas. Mr. Chairman, I move the committee grant a rule making an order a motion offered by the chair of the committee on ways and means or his designee that the House disagree to the Senate amendments to H.R. 3630, the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act of 2011, and request a conference with the Senate thereon without question of consideration. Rule waives all points of order against consideration of the motion. The rule provides that the Senate amendments and the motion shall be considered as read. Rule provides one hour of debate, equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member on the Committee on Ways and Means. Section 2 of the rule provides for consideration of HRS 501, expressed in the sense of the House of Representatives regarding any final measure to extend the payroll tax holiday, extend federal funded unemployment insurance benefits, or prevent decreases in reimbursement for physicians who provide care to Medicare beneficiaries. Under a closed rule without question of consideration. Rule Waves all points of order against consideration of resolution provides it shall be considered as read. The rule waves all points of order against provisions in the resolution. The rule provides one hour of debate equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the committee on ways and means. Section 3 of the rule provides that during consideration of a motion to instruct conferees pending their appointment to the conference on H.R. 3630, the previous question shall be considered as ordered to its adoption without intervening motion except one hour of debate under Clause 7. B of Rule 22. Such a motion shall be considered as read and shall not be subject to a question of consideration. Section 4 of the rule provides that during consideration of a motion specified in Section 1 or 3 of the resolution, the Chair may, A, notwithstanding the operation of the previous question, postpone further consideration of the motion to such time as may be designated by the Speaker as through Clause 1C of Rule 19 and B, postpone the question of the adoption of the motion through, uh, through under Clause 8 of Rule 20. Section 5 of the rule provides that the requirement of Clause 6A of Rule 13 for a two-thirds vote to consider a report from the Committee on the Rules the same day is presented to the House is waived with respect to any resolution reported through the legislative day of January 17, 2012. Finally, Section 6 of the rule provides that it shall be in order at any time through the calendar day of January 15, 2012 for the Speaker to entertain motions that the House suspend the rules as through, as under Clause 1C of Rule 15. You've heard the motion of the gentleman. Let me just uh, <clears throat> explain the, uh, the rule and, uh, and say that uh, I've, I've discussed the fact that we had this uh, two-hour-long Republican conference uh, meeting downstairs. And um, one of the things that came to light was, interestingly enough, an argument that that Ms. Slaughter has made regularly and that was of concern to her when we, when my party was last in the majority, and that is the notion of having uh, votes take place in the, in the dark of night. And so uh, we followed the Slaughter Directive and have decided rather than going through this evening and having the vote at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, that we're going to report out this rule and then uh, again under the, under the Slaughter uh, Directive we're going to meet at 9 o'clock in the morning which will allow us to have a um, full and open debate on this issue. Uh, we know that the President made it very clear in his statement on Saturday, as did the Minority Leader, the House Minority Leader, and the Minority Whip, that uh, the notion of doing anything other than extending uh, 
this package for uh, less than one year was uh, inexcusable is the word that the president used. It's included in our, our resolution. And uh, let me just say that this rule does uh, allow for us to consider basically all of the uh, alternatives here. It makes an order a motion to go to conference that's debatable for one hour that will be equally divided. The minority will handle uh, half of the time for consideration of that. And that vote will have two elements to it. Uh, disagreeing with the Senate amendment and going to conference, which, as we all know, as a kid, we saw a bill becomes a law, and uh, the idea of each house passing their version and going to conference is uh, the way it's supposed to uh, work, and that's what we intend. Now, Ms. Slaughter, before we convene, just ask me the question as to whether or not we're going to have a vote on uh, concurring with the Senate amendment. The vote on the conference, on going to conference, is exactly that. If one is actually in support of the Senate position. If one supports the idea of a two-month extension uh, that would expire in February for UI and the payroll tax and the Medicare beneficiaries, uh, the benefit to Medicare recipients through the reimbursement to doctors, then they should vote no on our going to conference. If someone supports the Senate measure, their chance to voice their support for the Senate measure will be to vote no on our going to conference. The minority will also have a motion to um, instruct conferees. That's preserved, and they'll have uh, members of the minority will have an hour. There'll be an hour of debate uh, divided on the uh, motion to instruct conferees. Uh, it also um, makes an order a. This resolution that I have before me here, and I know Ms. Slaughter has it because you looked at, at that, this, this resolution will be available for uh, an hour. And, um, and then um, the rule also will include um, same-day consideration authority uh, to bring up measures in the period between now and when we return in mid-January. And uh, so I think that this is an opportunity for us to, again, do this in the light of day. Uh, there was a very, very strong sense. Uh, beginning with the President of the United States and the statement made by uh, my California colleague, Ms. Pelosi, when she said, House Democrats will return to Washington, take up this legislation without delay, and we will keep up the fight to extend these provisions for a full year. Ms. Pelosi said that on Saturday, and so we feel very strongly about the imperative to move to get this done as expeditiously as possible to guarantee that our fellow Americans will not see an expiration of their unemployment insurance or uh, of the, uh, the payroll tax, um, the extension of the payroll tax holiday as we move into next year. So are there any amendments to the rule? Well, I have some comments I'd like to make first, if I may. Absolutely. appreciate your explanation. Uh, I hope everybody has read Alice in Wonderland. Um, there's very much, remember, Alice felt that her best attribute was that she was able to believe six impossible things before breakfast. Uh, I'm not appreciate the fact that you really concerned yourself about when I would want to vote, although I don't really believe a word of it. But, well, when we came up at 7.05 with the time schedule, the, the uh, agenda was, first, a motion to concur with the Senate amendment, middle-class tax relief, second, a motion to go to conference, and third, a resolution. Ways and Means, Energy and Commerce, House Administration, Transportation and Infrastructure. Now, we know why that's changed. I, I think we ought to be really honest and tell you that we've been hearing all day. I have from people on both sides of the aisle and people from New York, and everybody said they were going to vote to concur with the Senate bill. And I believe you knew you were going to lose. If the gentleman oh, would me, yield. Well, no, I'm not yield, yet. Not until I finish. I look forward here. to your yielding at some point. I really believe that that was the case and that you decided to change that because 80% of the Republicans in the Senate <clears throat> have voted for this, this resolution. And for heaven's sakes, we can't get 80% to vote for anything. I mean, just even trying to get a vote can take two or three days over in the House to try to, and, and you, you know, to try to get a conference how much it's going to take over there if indeed they were willing to do one, and they're not. But what is so impressive to me is, uh, and I, we can put them in the record or I can read them out, but you've probably seen them all day, what your senators are saying over there about what's going on over here. I thought Senator Luger's statement was really very revealing. He had hoped, but he had no reason to hope that the House would be sensible and go ahead and pass this bill. 
look, you are inviting enormous amounts of trouble. I don't know why. Because I, I do understand people who felt all year that we should not have unemployment insurance and that we should not have this payroll tax cut, suddenly now feel that two months of it is not enough and you want a full year. We have, that's an Alice in Wonderland attribute that we have to swallow. Uh, but second, the idea that, that you're going to be able to get all this done with the Treasury Department deciding what they're going to do in two weeks. It's not going to happen. I do believe, uh, I, I don't know where Mr. McConnell feels about it today. Uh, Mr. McConnell is supportive of going to conference. Was he? But he I know that uh, uh, the first reviews that came out was that uh, Secretary, Mr. Boehner had said specifically to Mr. Reed and Mr. McConnell, you guys work it out and I will accept what you give me. Right? Yeah. Now, we understand that there are lots of people in your caucus and your conference that would do that. And we think that's what the problem is, and you were afraid that was going to pass. Eventually it will. We believe it's that somewhere so here month, before. So it's going to be a two-month extension? You know that? That's going to be a two-month extension then? Yes, I do. It is. Okay, I'm glad you know and that. Let me tell you something. That gives us two months to work on for the rest of the year. But I would sure rather have the two-month extension than have the thing expire. In addition to the enormous amount of work, again, that's going to be for the people who print the checks and have to keep all this work going. But we, we know what you're doing. So we, you know, we're not going to play. Uh, so you don't, you're not, not supportive going, of what we just outlined here? In this? No, we're not. Okay, okay. We are well, not. Me, we think the idea of a, hoping for a conference is sort of like waiting for Godot. We're not at all sure we want to do that. Uh, we really want to try to help people. As we've been trying to all this, at least last six months, mm -hmm. worrying about these people out there. This is the year of tiny time of Tiny Tim and Scrooge. Uh, and it, we can see all over again that that's precisely what's happening here. There is really no great concern that people are losing their houses or not going to be able to feed their children. And there's no great concern out here that all these people are going to get this tax increase in the middle of the year. The idea that you just simply want to expand it for a year, you, I, again, I can't believe six impossible things before breakfast. I'm sorry. Uh, I know it would fit in a lot better here if I could. But every now and then my mind just rebels and says, look, Louise, you know, uh, you know what's happening here. Uh, and I think we know that tonight. I would like, frankly, to just make a motion that we can kind of cut to the chase uh, and just do uh, a straight motion to concur with the Senate bill uh, and Is strike the all the other. Yes, I'm going to make a motion to do that, please. Okay. You've heard the motion of the gentlewoman. Uh, concur with the Senate. Let, let, me, just, uh, let me just say that um, that vote is, in fact, <laughs> made an order under this rule when it comes to going to conference because by virtue of voting to go to conference for it or against it one is voting if they vote in opposition to this oh please they are i'm sorry mr dryer but that's another excuse one. me excuse me may I, may I complete my thought or you certainly may i appreciate that oh. very much uh one voting in opposition to going to conference which is we all know oh. under excuse me go ahead i'm listening well, I, that wasn't listening, but... I said, uh, mm-hmm. Okay. We do that in the South. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, South Buffalo or South Rochester? No, Kentucky. Kentucky. Can't, can't rise above your race. Well, anyone who wants to um, vote to support the Senate position simply votes in opposition to uh, going to conference because by virtue of voting to go to conference, you are disagreeing to the Senate amendments. And that vote is already made in order. Now, this is... Redundant. Is, may this, I, this is, you yield to me? Of course I'll yield. That is extremely different from having an up or down vote on whether we are going to concur. If I could reclaim my time, I will say, if I could reclaim my time, what I will say is. Nine to ten. If I could reclaim my time, what I will say is. Oh, may I reclaim my time? Go right ahead. Thank you very much. Reclaiming my time, I will say that anyone who wants to support that Senate position uh -huh. will vote in opposition to going to conference. Yeah. Because that's what going to conference is about. And I have to say that... No, it isn't. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Dry, you can say that to a cat come up. While we are asking in this motion... Would the gentleman like to be recognized? I would, please. Okay, I would very much would, because the motion before the, this body right now is that we have a straight motion to concur with the Senate with one hour of debate and to strike off the, uh, the, the sections in the rule. That's what well, we well, want to do. But we do not believe that for a second that voting to go to a conference is the equal of voting to concur 
with what the Senate did, 89 to 10. I'm going to read the rule here, if I might. Will the chairman yield? Section one, uh, I will after I read Thank the rule you. here. Section one of the rule makes an order a motion offered by the chair of the Committee on Ways and Means or his designee, designee that the House disagree to the Senate amendments. Mm -hmm. So by virtue of voting in Pardon. favor of the uh, going to conference, one is voting to disagree the Senate amendments. Would you so that's question? exactly what I mean. I think I'll first yield to Mr. Polis Thanks. and then to Mr. McGregor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, I mean, to be clear, if the, <coughs> if the no side prevails, and I, I'm somebody who thinks we need to pass uh, the Senate amendment, a no vote, does that and then... Choosing not to go to conference. Choosing not to go to conference, does that send a bill to the President and allow the tax cuts to continue then? Basically, uh, if we do not go to conference... Does, does that send a bill to the President? It doesn't send it directly to the president at that point. Right. But the thing, no, but, the, but that's, not, that's not the issue here. Where, the issue where does it here, go? Are, are you going to agree or disagree to the Senate amendment to the House bill, which is what they had? By going to conference. But, but uh, a no vote does that's not send the, the, the tax cut bill to the president, is what you're exactly. saying. We it need just, to vote uh, to concur with the Senate bill. So you, uh, so you are supportive of the two-month extension, I take it, even though the President of the United States, the Minority of Leader is... I'm extension, but we can Oh, okay, good. It. And that's... But I well, you've prefer, concluded... I you, prefer, Mr. Drive. If I could reclaim my time, if I could reclaim my time, I yielded to Mr. Polis. And if I could reclaim my time, and I'll... I yield, but just to be clear... No, I've reclaimed my time, Mr. Polis. I yielded to you. And let me just say that... It's very obvious that you have come to a conclusion that the Senate is not going to appoint conferees. You've come to the conclusion that the President's request that we complete our work, Ms. Pelosi's request that we complete our work right now, before we end this year, before we face this expiration and have in place a one-year extension, uh, is not taking place. And so that's your position to, to not support our effort to have this body work with the Senate to make this happen. You've come well, to the conclusion that it ain't let me. Happen. May I give my conclusion? My conclusion I'm happy to yield, is I'm that happy you, to yield to my friend from uh, Thank Rochdale. you very much. I think my conclusion is that you are afraid to have a vote to concur with the Senate because you are afraid you would lose. It's a simple request that we have that we'd like I've to have that. i heard that and I appreciate uh, your and opinion. And we do that's not believe, I think I speak for my colleagues here. That if we I can reclaim my time, let me say that's your opinion and I, I appreciate your opinion. You, you, you claim that Chair. we're afraid to have a vote. Well, you've done, stop putting let words in my mouth. Well, you I'm just said. Over here that we, we do not believe in. that having a vote on going to conference is the same as concurring with the Senate bill. Well, I think I've said it. Pretty clearly well, you have here. Said the House it, but I didn't make it disagrees true. to the Senate amendments. That's exactly what it says. And let me let me yield let me yield first to my colleague Ms. Fox. We haven't heard from any of our other Republican colleagues, and I'm happy to yield to uh, Mr. McGovern. I'm happy to yield to my friend from Grandfather Community. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you're doing a masterful job of explaining this situation tonight. And um, you know, people can make suppositions about things all night long, but I don't think that gets us very far in terms of making suppositions. So I, while I'm prepared to stay here all night long if, if we need to and listen to this debate, what I would prefer is that we vote on the motion that we have on the floor or, that has been made uh, because I believe that continuing this kind of discussion on suppositions and hy hypothetical situations is purely a waste of time. What we really need to do is make is to take votes and to move things along and just see where they turn out. I believe that's the proper thing for us to do, uh, as let opposed me, to uh, hypothetical. Let me let me, let me uh, reclaim my time. Then I'm going to yield to uh, Mr. McGovern and say that uh, I completely concur with my friend about the goal of getting there, but um, I'm not going to deny anyone on this committee an opportunity to be heard on this. Um, I'm not as prepared as my friend from Grandfather Community is to stay here all night. Um, I hope very much to uh, get a little rest myself this evening. Um, I've heard the arguments. I may need to hear them again, um, but and I suspect I will. And so with that, I'd like to yield to Mr. McGovern. I, th I thank the chairman for yielding to me. And, uh, and um, you know, I'm sorry that the gentlelady from North Carolina thinks that this debate is a, is a waste of time, but uh, for those of us who feel that... Um, uh, that a great injustice is being done here. Um, we, we, I think it's important to have the record clear. And I agree with you, the chairman has done a masterful job of trying to convince people that they're doing something that they're really not doing. 
Um, and I think what all my colleagues here have been trying to point out is that no matter how you slice or dice this, this issue will not be resolved tomorrow, that uh, middle class families will not be given a tax cut extension tomorrow that, as 160 million families, that uh, 2 million people who are uh, depending on unemployment insurance will not have that assurance tomorrow, that 48 million seniors who are wondering whether or not they're going to have uh, uh, adequate health care coverage, uh, that issue will not be resolved tomorrow. And so what we're doing here today um, is, uh, you know, we have a rule that, uh, that, that basically does not allow us the right to concur tomorrow uh, on the Senate substitute, thereby, you know, solving this issue once and for all. I mean, my hope was that we would, we, would, we would do this tomorrow and that everybody on your side of the aisle and everybody on our side of the aisle would work with our leaders to say, you know what, during this break, you know, try to work out uh, some pay-fors that are not, you know, that they are acceptable in a bipartisan way to a majority in the House and the Senate. And so we come back here on January 17th, uh, we can actually take that bill up and extend it for, for a year. We had the payroll tax cut bill up last week. And... You, you had your opportunity uh, to present uh, your pay-fors, and it was so filled with so many hot-button issues, it was going nowhere in the Senate. And I'll be honest with you, this compromise coming from the Senate has things that I don't like. This Keystone Pipeline uh, thing to me is an outrage that it's in this bill. But look, I'm willing to swallow that pill if it means making sure that middle-class families in my district and across the country get, get a tax cut. And I would say to the, the gentleman that... Um, you know, we, we have a habit here, and both sides do it, of always pointing fingers and blaming the Senate for the dysfunction. Well, this is one time when the Senate actually functioned. It actually came to an agreement. It wasn't the agreement that all of us would have liked, but it was a two-month agreement. And 89 senators, 39 Republicans voted for it. Um, I mean, I think that's a, a pretty big deal. I think when people, when the American people want us to come together and agree on things, when people come together and agree on things, it may not be everything, but I think we, it's, it's something we should, be, we should be glad about. What is bad is what is happening here. Because tomorrow, no matter how you vote, no matter what happens tomorrow, tomorrow middle class families will not get an extension of their, of their tax cut. Unemployed people will not be given the assurance that they'll get their unemployment checks Senior citizens will still be wondering whether or not they're going to uh, get the health care that they need. Um, and so, I can reclaim my time. Let me, just say, well, let me just say to my friend that I think it's very important to note that the bill that passed the Senate has already been reported by the National Payroll Reporting Consortium, Bloomberg News, and other outlets as being totally unworkable. And so the idea of believing that somehow we're going to have this two-month extension continue is preposterous based on these independent analyses that have well, been done I, on this. I'm happy to further yield. Yeah, no, and I, and, I, and, I, and I appreciate uh, the, the gentleman pointing that out, although nobody, nobody other than you seems to be believe that it's unworkable. Uh, for the, for well, that it's not much, me. I mean, that, 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 I'll be glad to have evidence of that. Yeah, just for that too, much, for that, that, too much period. Sure. But you know what? I'm, I'll, just, I'll just close with this. You know what? I don't know what, what's going on here, uh, but, you know, we're, we're dealing with people's lives. And I'm going to tell you, people watching this, you know, are, are probably wondering, what, what the hell are we all doing up here? I mean, the Senate came to a, a, a unprecedented bipartisan agreement. And we were told that the Speaker was for this deal before he was against it, and now he's against it, everybody's against it, and we can't even get an up or down vote on concurring with the Senate. We're, we're being denied that tomorrow. No matter what we do, we cannot solve this issue. And I think that's an outrage, and I think people should be outraged. This is not the way Congress should run. I think, I think this is kind of a, 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 this is a, a very clever way of trying to get around doing our work. But I'll tell you this, um, I, I have no idea. I, I'm not a, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen uh, after tomorrow. But uh, what I fear is, is that not much. And the people who are going to pay the price is not, is not anybody on this committee. Well, it's going to be people that we represent, and that's an outrage. Well, let me, uh, let me reclaim my time and, and thank the gentleman because I share the outrage of jeopardizing the ability for working amendment Americans to have the tax benefits they deserve and the unemployment benefits that are necessary. I think it's very important. I think it's very important for us to realize that we've passed two yeah, conference yeah. reports in the last few weeks. And the idea of saying 
that nobody understands what's happening. What we're doing is, is we are following the regular order by virtue of having this vote on whether or not we go to uh, conference. And anyone who wants to support the Senate position would, in fact, simply vote no on going to conference, and that is in support of the Senate position. And I think that it's very, very important for us to realize that these are independent organizations that have come forward with this statement saying that, I mean, this, this National Payroll Reporting Consortium, and we'll get a copy of this, uh, we'll be having it, you know, for debate on the House floor, has said that what the Senate has done is unworkable. And they, they've said that it's, would a gentleman like me to yield? Yeah, we're happy to yield, yeah, my friend. Has the Department of Treasury said this is unworkable? Has the administration me, said this is unworkable? Let me, I mean, has, I mean, let, me, let, me, let me reclaim my time and say that we've... We've had several. Yeah, uh, inexcusable we're is the term. Lives. That's my okay, point. and you're right. And I think that I think that these I think that these these arguments that have been put forward just day before yesterday, day before yesterday, by the president of the United States, who said it would be inexcusable for Congress not to further extend this middle class tax cut for the rest of the year. And then, as I said, Ms. Pelosi's statement: House Democrats will return to Washington to take up this legislation without delay. And we will keep up the fight to extend these provisions for a full year. I mean, of course, I'm happy to yield. Well, for yeah, for a full year, and that's basically that's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly. What, there's no, there is no Senate bill. There is no Senate bill. There is no Senate bill. It's a House bill, and what we have is the Senate amendments to the House bill. And so what we're yes we yes yes we are, and in fact. If we can move, if we can move expeditiously and get to conference, and I, the speaker is prepared to appoint conferees, and we are prepared to begin working to ensure that come, uh, well, we may have to work through this week and next, but we are prepared to work to ensure that no one has their benefits jeopardized. And you're absolutely right, Mr. McGovern. We are playing with people's lives here, and it's not playing. The playing we're doing is, is we're trying to do our doggone to make sure that they have these benefits. I'm happy to further yield. I've, I've just been informed by staff that that association that you mentioned uh, in the article did not take a position on this bill. Well, they may not have they taken are, a position on the said, bill. They said that it was complicated, but they were willing to do the work. And, um, and well, again, the, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't understand term, why we can't just have an up or down vote. The term used current. is unworkable. Well, uh, what, I'm, what I'm told is that they, that, they, that they, it's complicated, but they did not say that they could not do this work. Okay, well, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Let me just yield to it. Mr. Chairman. Yes, no, I know we're in the midst of debating your motion right now. Mr. That's, Chairman. That's what the debate that's on right now. Mr. Let me Chairman, recognize before you, Mr. Sessions. Before you, before you yield gonna, to him, I'd well, like my own time. Okay, let me, let me yield to uh, Mr. Sessions first. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I, I, I think that a good number of people, notwithstanding you may have felt like this was not what you wanted, should understand this, and that is that Republicans hold a position that we believe we should continue doing our work and it should last a whole year. That we should not... House Republicans is all I can speak with and for. House Republicans believe and believed in our bill that we should move our work through. There is much indecision that always takes place in the political process. And one of the things which we are being told repeatedly is Congress does not make decisions. They sit up there and argue, fuss, and fight. And we as Republicans believe very strongly that getting our work done through the end of, till the end of September of next year is the right thing to do so that we can quit fighting so we can quit the, the debate back and forth and tell employers and employees, physicians, so that they can make long-term decisions. That's why the two-year plan. And then we respectfully went through a process. Ma'am? Two-year plan. Two years. Two years for the physicians. Two years for Medicare. physician reimbursement. For, Medicare. Medicare. For, for the physician reimbursement at SCR. Then we believed that we would handle this as we did and get it to the Senate and give them plenty of time. Well, the real process is here, and really always has been, we do what we do or they do what they do, we pass it, we give it to them. They're the ones that rejected what we were doing and now we're simply coming back and saying we're not going to accept that, we want to go to conference. In no way is this meant to diminish any group of Americans. As a matter of fact, we as Republicans feel like we're trying to do the right thing by making a year-long effort or a two-year for SGR 
where physicians can make their decisions, where patients Thank understand you. what they are, I, and we believe this is the right thing to do. I, I think I'm, I'm, happy to yield, I'm, I'm happy to I, yield to my I would yield back my time. Because I, what I really am curious to know is it, do you believe that if we say we're going to go to conference, if that's the end of it, the Senate will have to do it? Is that what you believe? Well, I, uh, Harry Reid has said he's not going to do it. So I'm... I'm, I'm that's his business. Well, let, me, let me just reclaim then, my then, time then and the answer you by product, saying that there have been mixed reports that right. have come on this issue. Well, I haven't heard a mixed report, but... Well, I've just, Mr. Just, Mr. Chairman... Out of curiosity, let me ask you this. What was the end point here? If we send back something to them that you have to go to a conference and they don't do it, then we, we have achieved nothing. Well, let me just say that Is I that believe... True? We have you know, no bill in either house. If I could reclaim my time, let me just say that we know that when uh, we all study a bill becomes a law, it is required that the two houses, if they have different versions, come together. And that's exactly what we are doing. We're following regular order you here. You think you're requiring them to come back to do we're, conference? We're, pr we're proceeding with regular order. And with that, let me yield to uh, okay. Mr. Woodall. Mr. Chairman, I, I thank you. You know, I, this is my first year on the, on the committee. Really? Uh, and and <laughs> it, it's true, and, I, and I, I, I've been working on it a year, but I, I, I share Mr. McGovern's uh, uh, passion for the importance of this issue. I think back to Mr. Polis's uh, I'm just a bill uh, lesson that we got early on in, in, this, uh, in this Congress. I thought I understood the ranking member to say that when we were going through regular order and asking the Senate to come back so we can negotiate, I think you all would agree that the two-month solution is not as good as a one-year solution. When we when we asked the Senate to come back, you said that the Senate Majority Leader has indicated he's going to refuse to come back, something that's Im he, as important as we all he, believe? He absolutely said that. He refuses to reopen this bill. That, and what my question, Mr. Woodall, maybe you can answer it for me, is what's the end product here? Well, I, I if guess... If we are take, we refuse to vote on what they they are not coming back and to go into a conference, then what we have achieved is, here is absolutely I'm nothing. My friend from uh, nothing. Rochester. Well, right? Mr. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I just, I, I hope that the information that the ranking member has seen has been misreported. I hope it has been misreported. Well, it's been well, reported well, far and wide. I, I, my friend, you? Yeah. The, uh, I, I'd be happy I, I, to. I just, no, me, well, just I, the, the chairman has the, the time. I'm, I'm just. Happy, I'm happy. Well, no, no, I, I asked for my own time. I will, well, you just asked him to yield, and fine. I. Fine. Yeah, will I, you I, yield I, through, Mr. Woodall? No, no, I mean, I'm controlling the time. Thank you. I just want to make to sure that. that we don't misunderstand or misquote our Senator Reed, and I wanted to answer my good friend <laughs> from Georgia as to what Senator Reed, in fact, said. Senator McConnell and I negotiated a compromise at Speaker Boehner's request. I will not reopen negotiations until the House follows through and passes this agreement that was negotiated by Republican leaders and supported by 90 percent of the Senate. And finally, he says, I have always sought a one-year-long extension. I've been trying to forge one for weeks, and I'm happy to continue negotiating once or one once we have made sure middle-class families uh, will not wake up to a tax increase on January 1st. So before we reopen negotiations on a year-long extension, the House of Representatives must protect middle-class families by passing the overwhelmingly bipartisan compromise that Republicans negotiated and was approved by 90 percent of the Senate. That's the exact quote of Senator Reid. Well, I can reclaim my time. I will say that it is fascinating to, for the first time, listen to you and Mr. McGovern, who I rarely hear maligning the United States Senate, speak here in, in, uh, in support of so much. And so, yeah, well, I know. You're going to have another opportunity. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really answering Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, uh, Mr. McGovern, Mr. McGovern was pretty uh, complimentary of them, and uh, I will say that... Uh, there are varied views on our friends in the other body. And we all know the famous story that I first heard from Al Swift when pointing to the Republicans. He said, oh, no, they're not the enemy. They're the opposition. The enemy is the Senate. And uh, I think that um, there are a lot of people who are not particularly happy with the action that the Senate took. And I think that uh, because of the fact that it jeopardizes, uh, <coughs> after two months, it does exactly what they said <laughs> They don't want to have happen, and that is to have taxes go up for individuals. And there's no guarantee, there's no guarantee that we will, by 
kicking the can down the road, which is something that Mr. Bishop has now forbidden <laughs> us to use in a discussion that we had in the Republican conference, that kicking the can down the road is not acceptable. We have a January 1st deadline, and we believe very strongly that if the Senate will do its job as we're prepared to do our job, we can ensure that no American will see their taxes go up on January 1. Unemployment insurance benefits will be provided, and we'll see a two-year extension of the SGR. And let, me, let me further yield to Mr. Woodall, and then I'm happy to yield to you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank my friend from Florida for the, for the, full, for the full quote. Uh, and I appreciate the, the majority leader in the Senate uh, defending the Senate's uh, prerogative. Of course, we've said that throughout the year, that it, it's completely worthless for the House to, to take action on a bill and send it to the Senate and have the Senate do nothing. Uh, that's not a valuable exchange. So for the majority leader to say, we've acted on this, now we want the House to take some action, seems perfectly natural to me, and, and we'll be taking that action tomorrow. In the, in the helpful sense of, of having things in the full context, and kind of in the lines of, of something you and I were talking about last week, you know, my understanding of the way this place has often operated is that the Rules Committee is going to meet close to midnight, and it is going to jam something through, and it is going to wave same-day consideration uh, authority, uh, and it is going to be a 2 a.m. Uh, vote, and, and folks are going to walk out the door. And I believe we can do better. And we talk about the material that was handed out uh, earlier. I think that material got handed out because, candidly, that's been the way the place has operated. Chairman Dreyer has fought for regular order over and over and over again. I, I wish it had been something that, that we had done collectively, because then you all would, I, I know you're invested in those outcomes, we, we would be invested in it collectively, but we started down, a, there was a bad path we could have taken, and I'm so proud that we ended up choosing the better path. The better path, which is to say, let's pass a rule, let's debate it under regular order uh, tomorrow, let's not do it in the middle of the night, let's do do it in the light of the day, and let's not waive any uh, any same-day consideration authority. And so I, I would just say to my friends that this is a, I, I hope that we can look at this as a, as a step forward. We can debate whether it's a big step forward or, or a small step forward, but there was a better way to do this, and we found it. And I would say to, to the majority leader in the Senate, there is a better way to provide certainty to the American family. We have said over and over and over again that this is worth $1,000 to a middle-class family making $50,000 a year. What the Senate has offered is $166 to that family. Now, I tell you that we can do better, and Ms. Slaughter says that what, what do I have to believe that we can get that done in the next two weeks? I, I don't have anything to believe that. The Senate has not raised my expectations throughout the year, but we can do better, and we have to challenge them to do better. This has been a problem that was coming down the road. Folks knew when you all, long before I got here, when you all, all voted on it last December, we knew this day would come. And the, to say to families in my district that they have to sit back and wait, that they have to fight the uncertainty for another two months because we couldn't solve something in a year, but just give us 60 more days, and oh, in an Alice in Wonderland kind of way, we're finally going to have the answers. I mean, come on. We can do better, and if it takes work in the next two weeks until January 1st to do better, I'm in. Well, and I, mean, I invite you. Let me, let me I know you're in, too. Yeah, it's well, the chairman. Let, let me reach the my time, if I might, and I know that I know that I, I, have, I know you did. I know you did, but I have so many people who are asking me to yield to them that I'm... Well, you already did ask me to yield, and I yielded to you. I asked you for my own time. Well, shall I not yield to these colleagues of mine who are asking? Thank you. So let me... clear to you I'm asking for my time. Uh, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I really appreciate uh, Mr. Hastings reading the uh, comment uh, from Mr. Reed because I think it gives the American people um, a good perspective on the attitude of the majority leader in the Senate. Um, the last time I looked... Mr. Reed was just the majority leader in the Senate. He is not the king of this country. And for him to say that we must pass their bill is, I think, um, quite an assumption. I would, I'm going to invite you, if you would, to help me a little bit on the procedures. If I get off track, I invite you to speak up. 
but we've talked a lot tonight about the need to get back to regular order. And I do think that while civics has not been being taught in our country as much as I would like for it to be taught, that most people understand that a bill passes one house, goes to the other house, has to pass in exactly the same form, and if it does, then it goes to the president to be signed. However, if a bill is modified, then it goes back to the house of origin um, for it to consider. And if the house of origin doesn't agree with the change, then we do have a conference. Is that to settle the difference? A settle the differences between the two bills and the bi differences between the bill that we passed in good faith last week with a bipartisan vote, I believe, as all, almost all the good bills have passed this year, uh, went to the Senate and was modified drastically. And I also appreciate the fact that we've pointed out that the President has asked for a one-year extension and said it's inexcusable for the Congress not to pass a one-year ex extension, that Mrs. Pelosi has said it's unacceptable not to have a one-year extension. Even Mr. Hoyer has spoken out on behalf of this and said we need a one-year extension. So Will the, the yield? motion... Let me, let me, I'll, I'll yield. I'm, and we're gonna, what, I, what I'd like to do is, is I'd like to... Let Ms. Fox finish her statement. <clears throat> Let, I'm going to yield to Mr. Bishop, and then I'm going to recognize Mr. Hastings. So please proceed, Ms. Fox. Well, so the, tomorrow, when we have the motion to go to conference, we will be following regular order. Right. We will be doing what the Constitution calls for us to do, what our rules call for us to do, and what I think we all in good faith think we should do. The fact that 80% of the Senate Republicans voted for uh, what was sent over here, which I think is pretty abysmal, uh, is not binding on Republicans in the House of Representatives at all. Just because they made that decision does not mean that we have to support it. They do not speak for us. We are two independent bodies, and I... I'm so thankful to the founders for uh, creating the House of Representatives to be the people's house. Let me reclaim my time to just briefly defend our Senate Republican colleagues. Uh, Mr. McConnell and many other senators are in fact supportive of our resolving this in conference. Yes, they supported that measure that came out of the Senate. Uh, we can be unhappy with them for having done that. But they are supportive of resolving the differences between the House passed measure and the Senate passed measure in conference, which uh, means that we can still be hard on them, but I just want to give them their due on that. Well, I, I, I think that's appropriate uh, to be said. I do believe that's probably the case, that even though they voted for what I consider a bad bill, they support regular order. And I think that's the point that needs to be made. For four years, we didn't have a conference, as I recall. Right. So people have forgotten what it's like to go to conference and to have regular order. And so I think it's wonderful that we're going to be doing that. And I, I want you to know that I'm going to support the rule uh, and the resolution. And I think it's, it's rather frustrating to our colleagues that we're pointing this out. And I... Just hope again that we can move on the motions and uh, get to where we need to go. I'm going to yield to uh, Mr. Bishop, then I'm going to recognize Mr. Hastings, and uh, we're still in the midst of debate on the uh, on the uh, amendment to the rule offered by the gentlewoman from Rochester. The I'm I'm, appreci I'm appreciative of the time, but Mr. Hastings has been so anxious to have his time. I would not be offended if you went to him first, but if you want me to go first, all right. And I'm happy to receive that yield. Um, this is, this is one of those things that is an entertaining evening um, in a perverse kind of way. I realize I've missed the closer. I guess we'll miss Castle before I'm out of here, but closer does have a second rerun, so I'm okay right there. <laughs> However, I have been 
mildly amused, if not amazed, with Ms. Slaughter's opening statement when she had the psychic ability to be, predict what the Republicans were going to do when we went down to the floor and voted. I would suggest, in all deference, that if you really were that psychic, you probably would not have been here at 7.05 in the first place. <laughs> However, I want to put, I want to give you three reasons. I should have known better. You're absolutely right. I, I, I fault myself for believing that. Thank you, Ms. Slaughter. I'm, I'm always right. Listen to me again. There are three reasons why I will not be voting for her motion. The first one is that Mr. Hastings and I are in the middlest of the middle class here, despite where we are right now. And I still object to him calling us poor congressmen. We are not as wealthy as the rest of y'all. But I'm sorry, for me, a tax break for 20 days is nothing at all, and it's almost worthless. It's got to be a year. So I'm not satisfied with a 20-day sham. I want the full year. Secondly, the pay-for in the Senate bill is totally unacceptable. The idea that they are going to come up with this new pay-for, which will hurt middle-class homeowners, and those getting mortgages in the future, is totally unacceptable. And that's why I will not vote for, I do not want this Senate version to go through. Go back and come up with pay-fors that are fair and equitable. And number three, the process that we have outlet, that the chairman has outlined here, is indeed the norm. As Ms. Fox said, it's been four years without a conference committee. Sometimes we forget. That's quite right, but, but it's been a while. Well, there was four years when we didn't see one. A lot of pinging, ping-ponging back and forth. It's been a long time since I've seen one. Um, you, you got me off my rhythm here. I'm sorry. Don't ever do that to me. What I was trying to say is what you have outlined here is the norm. That's the way things are supposed to be done. You can do it the other way if you want to, but this is the traditional form in which we do these type of situations. And for that reason, I'm going to go along with what the chairman has outlined, and those are the three reasons I will be voting no on Ms. Slaughter's recommendation. Thank you very much. You've strengthened my hand. Now I'm happy to recognize my dear friend from Fort Lauderdale. Thank Mr. you Hastings. very much, my uh, good friend, the chairman. I, I, I genuinely appreciate it, uh, contrary to my good friend from Utah. I was not all that anxious. When I came in here, I really had in my mind uh, that this would be uh, sort of a, um, a swift uh, meeting, and I gathered that it could have been, but for the fact that we got off on um, uh, the wrong tack uh, when we established uh, the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I uh, am prepared to yield to you for uh, a question. The agenda that I received reflected uh, at 7.05 p.m. that we were going to have an emergency meeting. Am I correct? And in that uh, particular provision, uh, the agenda as published uh, allowed for a motion to concur with the Senate amendment to H.R. 3630, or the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Measure, a motion to go to conference on H.R. 3630. So if it is this the same thing that we're talking about now? Most or? of it. Uh, so we, we most, changed. Most of it is the same. Yes. I mean, obviously, uh, let, me, let, me just, let me just, if the gentleman yield, yield to the I thank my friend for yielding to me. Um, as I said, we had a protracted meeting of the Republican conference. And one of the things that we feel very strongly about is listening to members. And frankly, as I look down the, the aisle here, there are at least three members of this committee who offered recommendations at the Republican conference. And when we discovered, you know, and, and underscored the fact that the vote to go to conference does in fact have you disagreeing with the Senate amendments by virtue of choosing to go to the conference. And so if you want to support the Senate amendments then to, to the bill, then you would in fact uh, vote in opposition to going to conference, that that covered the question that my uh, friend has raised, now Mr. Polis correctly pointed to the fact that it doesn't have, uh, take the, send the bill immediately to the President's desk, but the fact is it is the opportunity for the full body and members to, to do exactly what my friend has said, and I thank my friend for yielding. I thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Then I ask another question, and I'll yield to you. When do we get a chance uh, to agree uh, to um, uh, the Senate? Will the gentleman yield? Them? Yes, I will. Uh, the opportunity that we're going to have is, uh, well, first of all, you vote no on going to conference, and that gives you a chance if you want to agree with the Senate action. But the goal is 
to, as Ms. Fox and Mr. Bishop have Agree to do what, well. Mr. Chairman? Excuse me? Agree to do what? If, if, you, if, if, you I support, vote no. if you support if you support the action that was taken in the Senate by virtue of voting no and going to conference, you are stating your support of the action that was taken by the Senate. I hope so. Let me say. So let me let me just go say, right ahead, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, let me let me just say that what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do here, is ensure that all of the issues are considered, and that we will in fact have a chance to have a vote. The real key is let's get to conference so that we can resolve this. Now, I know that sweeping statements have been made as to what the Senate is going to do, and I think that Ms. Fox was so on target. And this is something that I remind myself of regularly. I happen to personally believe that the Chairman of the Rules Committee should be omnipotent, that there should be no one ever in disagreement with the Chairman of the Rules Committee. I thought you but, were. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, um, the fact of the matter is, um, as much as I might personally like that, we know very well that that is not the case, and that there are a lot of people who play a role in input here. And when Ms. Fox pointed to the fact that, that Senator Reid is not king, he can't tell us what to do here. We have a, an opportunity to work our will. So we had this two-hour Republican conference downstairs in which we discussed it. And that is what played a role in making this modification that we have before us here. Thank you, Mr. I Chairman. I thank my friend for yielding. Yeah, no problem. Um, I wasn't in your conference, but to show you how fast things travel, and I do agree with your majority whip, um, who was the person uh, reported in your conference to have said, let's go do this in the dead of night. Louis Slaughter wasn't there, and they weren't acting on any slaughter rules. Let's be general, clear. If the gentleman would yield, if the gentleman yeah. yield I, that's mm -hmm. not what happened. Oh, um, fine. You know then, I but do I'm know, not interested. I, I, I just pointed out. If the gentleman would yield, if the gentleman yield sure, I, will I'll tell you, yield. I, will, I will tell you that that's not what happened. Okay. That's not what was said. Uh, I just know that the sentiment that emerged was the same sentiment that Louise Slaughter has raised with regularity All about right. late night and, and, and so have I, and so have you, uh, at different times, raised the same question regarding doing things in the dead of the night. Right. I applaud you and the Republican conference uh, for not doing that. Um, uh, and you, I you, hope sir. that it is a pattern, uh, different than the pattern that you have established, of continuing as we go through things or to start and then change. Let me chronolog where we are in this matter. Key dates um, I'll, I'll suggest that on Wednesday of last week, Speaker Boehner sat at a meeting in Senator McConnell's office, and Senator McConnell and Senator Reid, and Speaker Boehner, Boehner said the two Senate leaders should negotiate a deal, and that Senator McConnell would have his proxy. Thursday, Speaker Boehner made public comments promising to live by whatever agreement the Senate reached. If the Senate acts, his quote, I'm committed to bringing the House back, and we can do it within 24 hours to deal with General, whatever the Senate does. Can I just ask, I just ask what this is from that you're reasoning? It's, it, it's from a chronologue prepared by my staff in order for me to know things that appeared in the newspapers. Okay, so these are all emanate from things reported in the newspaper. I just Senate, want to make clear. CNN, the original quote of Boehner on television that I saw, um, and now I'm up to Friday. On CNN 12:18 and in the Washington Post 12:17, Speaker Boehner reacted to reports that we may have to settle on a two-month extension. Footnote right there. In January of 2009, House Republicans will likely reject a two-month extension of the payroll tax holiday Monday evening citing a desire to avoid striking a short-term deal and the uncertain impact such a deal uh, would have. Um, just under two years ago, House Republicans, including some of the party's more conservative members, were arguing that a two-month payroll tax holiday would effectively stimulate the economy, and Mr. Gohmert offered a measure with reference to that. On Friday night, after Senator McConnell uh, presents the payroll tax deal to his caucus. He's captured in this video leaving the caucus, high-fiving Senator Barrasso uh, from Wyoming. Later, Senator McConnell tells reporters, I obviously keep the speaker informed as to what I'm doing. 
On Saturday, Mr. McConnell calls payroll tax cut compromise a bill designed to pass. And he says, and I quote it, I thank my friend, this is his floor speech on 12-17-12, I thank my friend, the majority leader, for the opportunity to work together with him on something that could actually uh, pass um, uh, it, uh, 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 the Senate, and be signed by the President. Then on Saturday, just a few days ago, Speaker Boehner um, uh, called the deal, and I quote, a good deal and a victory. And I saw him with my own eyes. According to reports, he urged his caucus to declare victory and pass it on a conference call. And evidently, you all, some of you, had a conference call on Sunday. And something happened during that conference call that causes us here to be here on Monday doing what we are doing on now. On Saturday afternoon, Senator McConnell gave his consent to allow the Senate to adjourn for the year. Once Tea Party Republicans on Sunday in his caucus rebelled, Speaker Boehner reversed course and is now disowning the deal that he had supported 24 hours earlier. Mr. Chairman, let's just be frank with uh, the American people. Politics is what we do. Politics is rank and rife, and especially at the end of sessions uh, when nerves are frayed and members are anxious. And in this particular instance, when you cited, Mr. Chairman, to some national payroll somebody, it's as if uh, Senator McConnell and Senator Olympia Snow and Dean Heller and Susan Collins and Dick Lugar and uh, Scott Brown, and I'm, I, I said what Scott Brown commented, it's pretty, pretty serious, although I think it's the alter ego of Elizabeth Warren. Uh, but the House Republicans plan to scuttle the deal to help middle class families, and it's irresponsible and wrong, Senator Scott said. I appreciate their effort to extend these measures for a full year, but a two-month extension is a good deal when it means we avoid jeopardizing the livelihoods of millions of American families. The refusal uh, to compromise now threatens to increase taxes on hardworking Americans, and he goes on. Ms. Snow said, I spoke out against this unprecedented two-month policy-making experiment on Saturday. That said, there wasn't an indication that the House would be in disagreement with the Senate's action, and now we are offering a measure in disagreement. Nonetheless, what is paramount at this point is that this tax bill benefit all uh, hardworking Americans not be allowed um, uh, uh, to lapse. It is astounding that we come in here and put up this rule. The newer members do not know um, uh, 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 what David Dreyer, Louise Slaughter, Jim McGovern, and myself um, uh, uh, do know. At this time, with the Senate having gone sine die, on Saturday night, those 89 senators that voted for it and the 10 that voted against it are all over the world. Would the, ch would the gentleman it, yield? Uh, not at this point. All over the world. And it may very well be that they will come back here. But there's nobody on this committee that can say that the Senate is going to be back here Wednesday or that the Senate is going to be back here Thursday. Gentlemen, yield. I'll yield to um, uh, Ms. Dr. Fox. She asked uh, the yield, well, me to yield to her, and I said that I would. I was not complete with my statement, but I yield to Dr. Fox, and then I'll yield to you. Thank you. Uh, you. You said that the Senate had adjourned sine die, but I don't believe the Senate has adjourned sine die. No. I have read many reports that said that they are in, uh, in session. That's right. And I, I wanted to see if, if I was wrong on that. Well, they adjourn. <coughs> and when the Senate adjourns, they go everywhere. And that's exactly where they are, all over the world. Everybody in here and all the people in your conference all knew that, Mr. Sessions. Well, thank you. I, I was trying to make the same point, but, uh, you know, the Senate should understand <laughs> that they have a responsibility, and that's why they're staying in. You Until know something? Reclaiming my I, Thank you very much. I really much. do applaud you all uh, for doing what you're doing. But I do caution you for your own good that you are committing political suicide. And the reason that you are is you know the Senate, and you know how they act, 
And you put this kind of pressure on them, and you can reasonably expect that you got exactly what you wanted. And that was that we didn't pass a payroll tax ca uh, cut. We didn't do uh, the unemployment insurance. We didn't do the docs fix, which we should do permanently and stop coming in here. And nothing should be lost on the fact that the can that we have kicked down the road that's narrowing uh, for us is to be returned on Groundhog Day. We're going to do it all over again. All of y'all know that that's the case. What hasn't been said here also is that the president has not yet signed the spending measure. And you don't know exactly what he is going to do. But it's almost offensive to believe that 89 senators, McConnell and Reid, having an action asked for by your speaker, is now in the position of you all saying that we're going to ping pong something back over there that we know uh, that we aren't going to pass. You are Grinches when it comes to that, and you are acting Scrooge-like, and everybody in America ought to know it. Would the gentleman yield back? Uh, the, 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 the gentleman yields back the balance of his time. And let me just say there is no ping-ponging the idea of going to conference, and the vote now occurs on the amendment of the gentleman. Here, oh, Mr. Chair, I didn't have a chance. Uh, Mr. Woodall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the spirit of clarity, the, I'm a supporter of the Louis Gohmert uh, solution uh, to stimulus uh, that Mr. Hastings uh, referenced. And the only 60-day solution that Louis Gohmert ever supported was a 60-day payroll tax holiday of all payroll taxes, not just 2%, but the entire 7.65% on employees and, absolutely, it was a 60-day 60 60 day solution, 7.65% for employees, 7.65% for employers, and every nickel of income tax as well. The, the case that's being made is not that there is no such thing as a good 60-day solution. The case that's being made is We've been talking all year about getting the American people some certainty in their economic situations, not with the payroll tax, certainty in general in the economy. And we have the opportunity to do that. I, I don't know the Senate as, as you have described the Senate, Mr. Hastings. And I will tell you, uh, uh, straight from the heart, I have only the expectation that the Senate will be back in town this week and next week appointing conferees and working with us to provide a long-term solution. I, there is no other thought in my mind. And I will tell you that Article 2, Section 3 gives the President the authority to call the Senate back. And if this is as important as you all have very eloquently made the case that it is, then by golly. Uh, but, because you, you're exactly right. I mean, there, there are baby steps that, that we take in getting back to, to regular order. And I will tell you that that this body, under both House, uh, under both Republicans and Democrats, has ceded entirely too much authority to the executive branch and has rolled over entirely too often to the Senate. The very idea, again, I, I don't believe it, uh, but, but I'm new, the, the very idea that you could believe that the Senate so thinks they run Capitol Hill that they can just pass their bill and leave town uh, offends me. As, as, as the representative of a million folks back in the great state of Georgia, I, I don't think that's going to be the, the case. I'm absolutely certain that they'll, that they'll be back. I'd, I'd be happy to yield. I just want you to know that they've done it a lot in the 20 years that I've been like, If they have done it before, it was wrong when they did it before. It would be wrong if they did it this time. And because the president agrees with all of us here, about the importance of a one-year solution. I would certainly encourage him to use his authority to bring them back, and I thank the I Chair. Agree with let, me, uh, let me remind everyone that we are uh, <clears throat> now considering the uh, amendment offered by the distinguished gentlewoman from Rochester, as she reminded me just a few minutes ago, and I'd now like to recognize Mr. Polis in hopes that before too long we might be able to wrap up this two-hour discussion on the slaughter amendment and uh, move ahead. It seems like a two-hour discussion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Before I begin, I'd like to yield briefly to the gentleman from Massachusetts. Thank you. I thank the gentleman for yielding. I just uh, uh, thought my colleagues might be interested in a breaking news alert from CNN entitled House Republicans Won't Allow Up or Down Vote on Senate Bipartisan Compromise to expend, Extend Payroll Tax Cut. And uh, it quote says, GOPH told CNN 
that the vote would likely be scrapped to avoid having House Republicans oppose a tax break for working uh, Americans. And I, I just uh, I, I read that uh, with, uh, with a great deal of um, frustration because, uh, you know, I, I don't know what I don't know what we lose by uh, 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 by passing the Senate uh, a compromise. We guaranteed we have two months to work out a year-long compromise, and uh, I think that that's, that's a that's a that we're not we're not gambling with the lives of, of middle-class Americans and senior citizens and unemployed. But um, anyway, I thought my colleagues would be interested. I thank you, Joe. Thank you. I'd also like to inquire of the chair. We have uh, one of our colleagues uh, from Texas, Ms. Sheila Jackson, who's been waiting patiently. Will she have the opportunity to uh, present to the body on on this matter? Uh, we are just um, actually reporting out this rule. We're not having a hearing on it. Um, and Ms. Jackson Lee uh, has known that. Um, so she uh, would it be out of order for me to yield a moment to her? Or? Uh, we're not having a hearing, uh, okay. so actually it would be out of order since we're not in hearing mode. We're in markup of this uh, measure. Thank you. Well, let me let me, let me just say we're we're yeah. in the midst of markup here, and since we're in the midst of marking up this rule. Um, it's not in order for members other than the Rules Committee members to be heard. Okay, I, I just wanted to uh, to ask whether With she... With all due respect, I appreciate Ms. Jackson Lee being here, of course, as always. But, uh, you know, there, there are no amendments that have been filed to this uh, rule um, that uh, were made in order. There hasn't been time to file. I mean, actually, well, Ms. Slaughter just filed an amendment to the rule. Well, no, no, no. She's filed. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about an amendment. To oh, amendments the under the rule. The yeah. Of yeah. course, this is just an amendment in our markup here of the rule. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just uh, will make my remarks uh, briefly. Again, I think that what we're looking at here is is the typical. Uh, tax and spend Republican policies. We saw a defense authorization bill uh, with over $800 million in earmarks and pork. Uh, that was a study that Claire McCaskill put together. The omnibus, which uh, as the chairman uh, confirmed was almost all deficit spending, record levels of deficit spending. Now a huge tax increase. It's just spend money, spend money, raise taxes, raise taxes. Uh, here we have an enormous tax increase on the middle class. It goes in January 1st. I mean to think that somehow in uh, 10 days uh, I'm not sure how anybody expects to thwart this. We had several opportunities to do a long-term uh, uh, tax reduction in this. We had the opportunity through the super committee. We had the opportunity by taking up the Gang of Six or Bull Simpson. We didn't do any of that. Uh, so here we have just tax and spend, tax and spend, tax and spend. I'll yield, yield the gentleman. Yeah, the, the, the Republicans walked away from those. Again, they haven't brought any of those measures to a vote. They haven't brought Bill Simpson to a vote. They haven't brought Gang 6 to the vote. They walked away from the Super Committee, and here they are raising taxes. You can't raise taxes to get to solve this deficit. You can't do it. You have to start cutting spending. Rather than have an omnibus full of pork, full of earmarks, record levels of government spending, you have to cut spending, and you can't just raise taxes on the middle class to get out of this. So, again, I don't know where we're going with this, but I think it's the wrong direction for the country. Uh, I don't think it's the mandate. That was, that was given to members of Congress in this session. I'll yield back to the gentleman. I, I, I thank my friend for that, and let me just say that what we're attempting to do here is to proceed with regular orders so that we can have a House-Senate conference that will, uh, in fact, allow us to do that. Mr. Jarvis, our Deputy Staff Director, has sat very patiently for the last hour at the table <laughs> awaiting the vote on the Slaughter Amendment, and I hope very much that we'll have a chance. For, I, I suspect you might call for a recorded vote. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It might be a voice vote. There's no need for him to be sitting there uh, if it ends up being a voice vote. But the, the vote now occurs in the Slaughter Amendment. Those in favor will say Mr. Chairman. Oh, let, could let me I? just say Mr. Mr. Webster would like to be recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I, because I think it's important that we at least talk about the policy here at some point in time of why this would be a bad move to concur with the Senate Amendment. Why, what's wrong with it? And I'm going to give you one thing. It's from my perspective. I don't know how many of you have filled one of these out uh, for 35, 40 years. Probably nobody at the table has. I have. It's called a 941 quarterly federal report. Every small business has to fill these out every quarter. That's the important thing, every quarter. This form has not changed in years and years and years. It makes it a little simpler when that takes place. Now. In here, under the Re Paperwork Reduction Act notice, it says this, record keeping, 13 hours and 59 minutes, learning about the law, 
47 minutes. Preparing, copying, assembling, sending the form to the IRS, one hour and three minutes. Now, for whatever reason, maybe the Senate, maybe none of those 89 senators or whoever voted for this has ever filled one of these out before. Maybe they haven't. Yeah. It's pretty sad if they haven't because they ought to read the forms that they produce. This is it. And, and so here we have now 14, 15 hours worth of work to do this. Every small business, millions and millions of businesses. Now, what's going to happen? The law only lasts two months, not three. Every quarter is January, February, March. And if they were doing anything that was constructive, they would have only done it for a particular quarter, not for two months. Now there's going to have to be extra lines on here, and you're probably going to get two. They don't know whether we're going to extend it or not after the two months. So all of these small businesses are going to be held in jeopardy, not knowing what form to fill out. You know when these are mailed out? The month before. So at the end of February, they're going to mail out form. But then again, they may mail out another form. They may out this one, they may mail out another one. And I'll tell you this, it's wrong. What you're doing to small businesses in this Senate amendment is wrong. You are hurting them desperately. I've had a business for 50 years. We're a third generation. We do our own work. It's a small business. There are millions of us out there all over the country. Are they tired of this kind of stuff where you just all of a sudden... Poof, here's your form, but we don't know if this is your form. It may be another form, and one of them may have 10.4%. Um, another one may have 124 And we may have to fill out two. And maybe we'll have to read the law. And maybe it won't take us just 47 minutes. Maybe it'll take it a couple hours. Maybe it'll take us 28, 30, 40, 50 hours to keep the records. And maybe it'll take us about three or four or five hours to fill it out. Small businesses don't have that kind of time to spend filling out federal forms because a, a Congress failed to take into consideration what they do. Why? Because, oh, well, we want to argue about the process. The Senate did this, and 89 of them voted for it, so it must be right. It's not right. It's wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because it hurts millions and millions of small businesses who are going to have to live within this. Sorry, but this is a bad, bad amendment, and it's a bad idea to concur. Thank you very much. Thank you. I yield back. The vote now occurs on the amendment of the gentlewoman. Those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. 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 Make sure the no's have it, the no's have it. Mr. Jarvis, we'll call the roll. Mr. Sessions. No. Mr. Sessions votes no. Ms. Fox. Ms. Fox votes no. Mr. Bishop. No. Mr. Bishop votes no. Mr. Woodall. No. Mr. Woodall votes no. Mr. Nugent. No. Mr. Nugent votes no. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Scott votes no. Mr. Webster. No. Mr. Webster votes no. Ms. Slaughter. Aye. Ms. Slaughter votes aye. Mr. McGovern. Aye. Mr. McGovern votes aye. Mr. Hastings. Yes. Mr. Hastings votes aye. Mr. Polis. Aye. Mr. Polis votes aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Chairman votes no. And the clerk will report the total. Four yay, eight nay. The amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? If not, the vote occurs on the motion of the gentleman from Dallas. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Peter no. Chairman, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. And clerk, call the roll. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Sessions votes aye. Ms. Fox. Yay. Ms. Fox votes aye. Mr. Bishop. Yay. Mr. Bishop votes aye. Mr. Woodall. Yay. Mr. Woodall votes aye. Mr. Nugent. Aye. Mr. Nugent votes aye. Mr. Scott. Yay. Mr. Scott votes aye. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Slaughter. No. Ms. Slaughter votes no. Mr. McGovern. Nay. Mr. McGovern votes no. Mr. Hastings. Nay. Mr. Hastings votes no. Mr. Polis. No. Mr. Polis votes no. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Chairman votes aye. Clerk will report the total. Eight yay, four nay. And the gentleman from North Charleston, Mr. Scott, will be managing this uh, rule on the floor at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Or we're going to do one minute first? Or? Yeah, just shortly after 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, and for the minority, Ms. Slaughter. Thank you all very much. Hope everyone has a great evening. We'll look forward to seeing you in the morning.